here's another question someone emailed me they have some type of a room built over a deck so we have a deck I'm not going to draw the pillars the house um, the deck is attached to the house the room it looks like it's some type of a um, sun room it looks like a room addition to me basically but uh, the it's built on top of the decking so they sent me some pictures and they said that it is flooding with water whenever it rains it's uh, the water is leaking onto the deck going under the decking and creating a problem so I have a couple of solutions or a couple of things that might work the first idea and the easiest um, but uh, will it work over time uh, I don't really know that would be to apply some type of a sealant I would like to say the word caulking but uh, some type of a sealant and I like to use the window and door sealant and um, you know will silicone work for something like this probably but I cannot provide you with product information that way when it fails I don't get in trouble so uh, get a good sealant and I have it all squished in here already but you're gonna have to put it in there and try not to get it you know some people go in and they put a lot in here and then they put their piece of metal in there and the piece of metal squishes it all out and it doesn't look good I like to just put enough in there to get a seal and you can always go up to get a seal up here and then squish the metal into the sealant and then we have a nice spot that is going to hopefully stop any water from sitting on top of the deck and coming in here and you could always uh, go to a metal fabricator and have them put a little bend at the end here or you might be able to find some roofing edge metal and uh, it might work the roofing edge metal has some of it has a little bend like this and of course it would sit on where the water would come off the top and then go away but it might work perfect for here and uh, if you take a look at this picture and then go down to your local home home improvement center or lumber yard you might be able to find uh, something like that so, so you see a picture and it makes sense well that's the picture and then of course your building paper will go over the metal siding will go over the paper and try to keep the siding up at least um, maybe a quarter of an inch a half inch something like that so that water doesn't get trapped and absorb into the siding my second idea would be to cut the decking so that it actually separates or creates a separation point so any water would simply um, drip off of the edge the only problem with this is that the joists um, might need to be relocated they might need to be moved you can see here where we have a single joist supporting the wall and that might not be enough you might need another joist to create a doubler there this is a standard construction practice remember these are just ideas I'm throwing them out there I don't know if this would pass any local building inspections um, just kind of giving some ideas to you and of course remember I'm not an engineer for those of you who hate to hear it all the time now another thing you could do would be to add some blocks 16 inches on center and it's instead of putting the doubler in this basically forms a doubler underneath the wall another common uh, practice now depending on how you're going to waterproof it and I don't know if you'd be allowed to uh, by an engineer but it might not be a bad idea to notch the block so have this um, block the same width if you have two by ten um, deck joists then use a two by ten block and then um, cut a notch to where later on you can see uh, where the metal could run down so you'll see that in a few uh, minutes here but maybe cut a notch out of the block or cut a notch and then have it uh, maybe a one inch notch out of the block this this will make more sense in a little bit I'm just kind of throwing out another idea there so the wall that is going to be perpendicular will be supported by the joists here so here we have our doubler now here's just kind of something else I'm going to throw out you might need to install another joist here 
if the decking is extending past about three inches, maybe four inches, that might be okay. But any more than that might be a problem. But I would like to see another joist here. So uh, something like this, again, you know, if it's sticking past maybe four inches, that might be okay. Anything more than that, you're probably going to need another joist. And of course, you could always move this joist back a little bit if you wanted the two by six decking or your decking to extend past a few inches. And of course, there is the line separating it. And then, of course, you're going to need to cut the joist. And this might require popping this joist up um, and uh, cutting it, or you might be able to cut it in place. And there we have a nice separation. Nice line around there. Now, if we do cut the decking, it will weaken the strength of the floor, the structural strength of the floor. If we do that, we might need to add some blocks and some straps. And um, of course, you can see here how this will kind of reconnect the flooring back together. And again, the blocks here, if you're not going to use the double joist, these blocks right here will be fine. Just put the straps on them to connect the decking. And uh, here's another method with a shorter block. And of course, the strap and the block are going to be connecting the decking, except we have a joist on top that will support the decking above. Kind of hope this makes sense. So again, this idea here will help you if you're going to install metal. If you're going to install metal, the metal is going to be an inch below the decking. And the method here um, if you're not going to use the doubler, you know, if you uh, need the blocks to go all the way across to support the wall, you're probably not going to be able to use this method. But uh, if you use the doubler, something like this might work and allow the metal to um, flow freely through here. Um, as you'll see in a moment, let's put the framing back together. Come down. Here's the metal. And of course, the metal here is unobstructed. Over here, we have the joist in the way. It will need to notch around the joist or notch around the joist and you just simply bend the metal up. This is the way I would prefer to do it. Now, even though I didn't draw it in here, the metal is going to need to fold over. Um, this is going to have to ex extend it past a couple of inches and then fold it over. And then the next piece um, we'll go over that and then fold over this one here. And I have other videos on that. Leave a comment in the comment area if you need more information on that. And of course, the tab here, I like this idea. Let's remove the metal. And you're going to need some type of sealant on top of the joist, something to prevent the water from going back in here. So just put a dab of sealant on top of the joist. If you want to put some on the framing plates, knock yourself out. I think that could create a water trap though. So let's try to restrict it to just on top of the joist. Metal back on and that is it for the video. I do not know if there is a better method. If you have one, feel free to leave a comment in the comment area and share it with us. And uh, again, this isn't a common situation. This isn't something I've ever seen before, as a matter of fact. So someone went in and built a room on top of a deck and uh, left the, the next homeowner with some problems that they have to deal with, which is realistically job security for most contractors, I guess.